할렐루야 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 자리에 앉으셔서 Let us sit down together. 오늘 하나님 말씀은 And hear the word of God. The word of God is found in Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16 verse 13 to 20. 마태복음 16장 13절부터 20절까지의 말씀을 제가 한 절, 여러분이 한 절. Let us uh, read and read in rotation. I will read first, and then uh, you can all read. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, "Who do the people say the Son of Man is?" They replied, "Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah of one of the prophets." But what about you? He asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he warned his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Christ. Amen. Holy God the Father, on this day today, on the, on the year 2019, we commence this healing crusade in commemoration of the 50th year of the founding of Sangwak Church and in accordance with this spiritual mission that you have given us, with the zeal that you have given us, we have come, a, come again to this healing crusade. We pray that in this crusade that you would particularly bless us we pray that you would bless uh, the souls and their families that have given uh, their offerings to you. We pray that you bless all these souls and their families. Please bless them for their holy offerings that they have offered. We pray that you bless their families. Peace bless all these souls and all their families that have given these blessings. In this way, to those who have given their thanks offerings to the Lord, we pray, although we have not mentioned them all, we pray that you would particularly remember them, all of them, and bless them and their families. Please work your powerful blessings upon them, just as you have promised. Please lead them, lead their souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Amen. May God bless all those who have given their thanks to God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Let us sing uh, a hymn together.
예수의 피밖에 없네 사제가는 증거도 예수의 피밖에 없네 For this healing crusade, you must pray most diligently. You must be patient. There are those who have come from far to hear uh, the word and to experience the healing in this healing crusade. This is a most important healing crusade that we are are experiencing right now. Although we have become Christians, the hope of a Christian and the faith of a Christian, we do not properly know. Therefore, one cannot properly fulfill the relationship that he has with God. The Lord, this is what I believe. For a, such a person like me, He made me healthy and He made give me the strength to do His work up till now. And what was the reason? There were other revivalists uh, that um, did their ministry during the same time. The same time I did, yet they all disappeared. They all have departed this earth. They all they have disappeared or entered into obscurity. There is almost none of them now. However, God has made me healthy and strong up till now. He has made me perform signs and wonders. He has enabled me to do the works of God by the Holy Spirit up till now. So Simon Peter, Simon Peter um, reacted after the Lord Jesus spoke that he was going to uh, perform the work of God by dying on the cross. And then uh, the later on, the Lord Jesus spoke, I have, co I have given you a particular command, but what is, what is the relationship, what is the situation of another disciple to you? So the Lord Jesus, like, like he had promised to his other disciples, he promises us that after we have done the will of God, he will come and take us. So amongst the disciples of Jesus, there was a disciple called Judas. 
And this disciple, this disciple, he was the one who suffered martyrdom uh, at the most earliest age, that is James. However, the Apostle John lived until a hundred years old. He lived up until a hundred years old. So what did he do? Just as the Lord Jesus had prophesied to the disciple, Man, here is your mother. Woman, here is your son. This is what the Lord Jesus spoke by his word. And then, and then the apostle, and then this is, this is what the Lord Jesus had spoken. Man, this is your mother. Woman, this is your son. This is what Jesus had said. And so, in Revelation chapter 12, it states, the disciples of Jesus are the children of the woman, and the children of the woman will battle against the children of the dragon. And the sea and the earth allowed an opportunity for the woman to escape the attack of the dragon and so and so in an attempt to destroy uh, the woman and her offspring the dragon the dragon stood at the edge of the shore so the offspring of the woman how can you um give a match a symbolic match to these children of the woman and so, this is why John, the Gospel of John is so important. So, the theology that we pursue can be called Yoanine theology, the theology of John. So, um, when we talk about theology in itself, when we talk about theology, uh, so where is the fundamental basis of... Um, mainstream theology it naturally comes from the roots of the teachings of paul of apostle paul and so this is why it is called um pauline theology so in in the barrier international theological ceremony uh, seminary we call it johannine theology or apostolic theology So, uh, Johannine theology, uh, it is not, it does not have the, it does not have the spotlight that it has in the world. Uh, it is, uh, we might say, hidden from the from the rest of the world. So, the Gospel of John and First John, Second John, and Third John were written by the disciple. Uh, the disciple John, the Apostle John. This is what we know. So you will read these books. You'll read the books of the, you'll read the bo the books of the Bible. And even though you do not uh, re receive or read by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, you will recognize that these are historical documents from Genesis to Malachi. You'll recognize the historicity of these books and you will gain some learning from them however no matter what kind of learning you receive you will not be changed in your soul in your spirit so from Moses onwards uh, there was a uh, a divine a theocracy a dominion that was ruled by God himself so however there is not any particular specific mention of this though but when the Lord Jesus came and he proclaimed the kingdom of God he proclaimed the kingdom of God 
and this was this kingdom was not the kingdom that belonged to this earth but the kingdom that belonged to heaven that was above and this is what the Lord Jesus had proclaimed Jesus has spoke of the word of the kingdom that was in heaven not of this created earth this kingdom is not a kingdom that cannot be found on this created universe but that which is found in the heavens this is what the Lord Jesus spoke about so the Lord Jesus had spoken um, uh, the kingdom of God abides within you but uh, some people when they read this they confuse it they confuse it and say that this is some sort of conceptual king kingdom or some sort of philosoph philosophical kingdom this is not so so when you and I when we hear about the word of the kingdom we do not we must not understand it in a conceptual way or some sort of a idea so if your heart is not changed if your spirit is not changed if you do not seek in your heart for the kingdom of God if you do not seek him seek his kingdom you cannot you will not see the kingdom and you will not see the father so when we when we read about the account of the law of Moses in the Old Testament in the, in the Old Testament when when they when they kept the Sabbath they were they were um, condemning one another they condemned one another and they would see if other people would keep the Sabbath not just themselves but other people and if they didn't they knew that they must be punished with death they must be stoned with stoned and killed so anybody who did not keep the Sabbath as prescribed in the law of Moses among many uh, they would die you cannot uh, res you cannot actually serve God and welcome God uh, personally you are only you are only fearing him you are only revering him you only fear him you only are afraid of God you serve him in fear because they thought that the voice of God came from the mountain from heaven but when the Lord Jesus actually came and he spoke his words he said the one the one that you are seeking God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth he is not the God of the past you must not serve him as as was uh, served in the past as was served in the law of Moses but in the in accordance with the words spoken by Jesus there was no one who received the atonement of the sacrifice who received the Holy Spirit who were born again before the coming of Jesus so when the Israelites traveled around the, the land of Canaan they could not properly serve him except within the temple that was made out of the hands of man God is spirit this is uh, stated most clearly by the words of Jesus and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth so worship the word worship means to seek God it means to seek his face to seek his face to worship his face so God is spirit so the those who worship him must worship him in the spirit God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth God is spirit so your service your service and your devotion if you do not do these things in the spirit in the Holy Spirit you cannot be accepted by God because God is himself spirit this is stated most clearly so what we find in the Gospel of John how can you find how can you find and seek God you will only seek him you only know him by the Holy Spirit it is only by the Holy Spirit that you can find him 
and when the Holy Spirit comes, He will teach you all things, not accordance, uh, not not in any similarity with that which was taught in Moses, but with in accordance with three truths, in accordance with righteousness and judgment and sin. So when we live in our flesh, when we live in the fleshly body, we have we have the idea of sin when we live in the flesh. So we think of sin, we think of curse. So when you and I, we do not have sin in our flesh. It is in your sin, it, it, it is in your heart, it is in your spirit. This is where sin lies. So knowing concerning righteousness, judgment and sin, uh, the Holy Spirit will teach when He comes. There is no way to escape these uh, these truths when the Holy Spirit comes and He teaches us about it. Concerning sin, because you do not believe in Me. And concerning righteousness, because I will go to the Father and you will remain on this earth, but I will go to the Father. And concerning judgment, because I am going to the Father whilst you remain and you will await to receive judgment. And this also refers to Satan, who will most clearly receive judgment. This is all concerning spiritual matters. The Holy Spirit does not speak of His own accord, but He speaks only what Jesus says. He only reminds us and speaks and, and interprets and gives us the interprets the interpretation of the words of Jesus into our spirits, our hearts. He reminds us again of what the Lord Jesus spoke. And so the Holy Spirit, when He comes, He will remind you and know and let you know of everything that I have spoken to you, of all the words that I have spoken to you. And this is what uh, the Gospel of John clearly states. It is clearly stated in the Gospel of John. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot believe in Jesus. If one is not born of the Holy Spirit, no one can see the Kingdom of God. You can only find Him in the Spirit. You can only find Him in Spirit. If you're not changed through the Spirit, you can never see God. So even the people of the Old Testament, they would pray diligently. They would try to seek Him and find Him. But no matter how much you did this, you could never be received by God. You can never be forgiven of your sins and be atoned of your sins. So, when you receive, you must repent of your sins in your spirit. You must repent of your sins in your heart. So, so the law of Moses composed of things concerning uh, the flesh and concerning uh, created things, concerning uh, ritualistic things concerning the things made by the hands of man and not concerning spirit and so even in the Old Testament in the law of Moses there were prescriptions of uh, of uh, the cleansing of water and so this is a uh, similar to the um, the baptism by sprinkling that is found in some Christian denominations so even in modern Christian denominations there were there are religious courts, there are denominational courts, and I myself were judged in these courts, uh, but these are only ri rituals, only religious, religious and denominational rituals. You must, not, uh, you must not regard the things of God in these way, in this way. Uh, so so uh, the Christians, even in this modern day, they only consider things related to uh, religious rituals and this is all that they see we must not uh, think like this so repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ but whoever is corrupted after they've experienced all these things there is no way to go back to God in repentance there is only one opportunity 
So you must repent. You must repent daily. But what is it that you repent for? You, the, the testimony that you can actually repent signifies that you can uh, still receive the forgiveness of sins, that his, uh, his grace can be received. So there are, um, there are two types of sin, those sins that can be forgiven and sins that cannot be forgiven. There are two, dis two different types of sin. So, you must uh, repent daily for your sins, uh, and this is also prescribed in the Lord's prayer, the prayer taught by the Lord. You can repent daily. So there are two sins, sins that you can be forgiven for and sins that you cannot be forgiven for. There are, there are some sins that you can be forgiven, but there are some sins you cannot be forgiven for. And you cannot, you cannot even repent for, the, for those kinds of sins. So, those sins that you cannot repent for. There is only one time that you can repent for this. But if you treat this with disrespect, if you treat this irreverently, then there can be no way back to repentance to God. Anyone who sins against the law of Moses will be forgiven. Because the Lord Jesus himself shed his blood and atoned by his sacrifice. But there is a sin that you cannot be forgiven for. The only way to be forgiven for these sins that can actually cannot be forgiven is that you have to die. You have to die again. Although you can be forgiven for all the sins that are committed in the law of Moses, so you receive the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus. You can be forgiven for these sins as found in the law of Moses, but for those sins that cannot be forgiven, you can only be forgiven once. So why is it that the Lord Jesus had to die once? Why is it that he had to die once? If he did not die once, then we cannot be saved of our sins. So the sin that Adam had to die for, Jesus died in his place. This is only once. This is only once. This only happens once. This can happen only once. And what is the testimony? The testimony is given by the Holy Spirit. And so when the Holy Spirit comes, uh, He will free you from sins. But after you become corrupt again, you cannot come back to God in repentance. If you speak one, uh, one empty word, one careless word against the Holy Spirit, there is no sacrifice left for sins. There is no sacrifice left for sins. But the awaiting of the fiery judgment of God, of God of, to those who are enemies of God. There is no sacrifice left for sins. So if you speak against the Holy Spirit, if you oppose the works of the Holy Spirit, you cannot ever be forgiven of your sins. There is no way back to God in repentance. So even for me, I repent uh, countless times in my thoughts, in my deeds, in my heart. I am uh, I sin all sorts of things in my mind, in my thoughts. I repent for all these things regularly and daily. And I can be forgiven of these sins anytime. But the sin that can never be forgiven, the sin that can never be forgiven, this sin that can never be forgiven, this cannot given or uh, be given uh, twice. It can only be given once. 
So what is it that we must be careful about? Falling into temptation. When you fall into temptation, there is no way back to God. If you fall into corruption, into great temptation, there is no way back to God again. So when you and I, uh, we live our lives of faith, so we were at once full of joy, full of the Holy Spirit. So once we went into corruption, once we fell into sin, once we fell into great sin, uh, no matter how much we tried to go back and pray and serve God, uh, we could not go back to God. So, so in our Hebrews chapter 6, it says, with that fraction of strength that you have, you must return back to God. But even then, it is so difficult. When you have first uh, received that joy and that fullness of the Holy Spirit, you cannot, if you fall drastically into corruption, go back to God again. So do not grieve the Holy Spirit for which you have been given for the day of your redemption. This is what uh, the Bible sternly warns us about. It is only by the Holy Spirit that you see God. You can only seek Him by the Holy Spirit. So we, are, you and I are all those who have been born of the body of a woman. However, if one does not welcome the Holy Spirit, you cannot, you cannot um, confess properly to Jesus Christ. You cannot recognize Jesus. You will only see Him as the one that came from Nazareth. However, the one who is born of the Holy Spirit, they will know that he is unlike those who are born of the body of woman. He alone is the righteous one. He is the righteous one. And you can only recognize him and see him by the Holy Spirit. If you have not welcomed the Holy Spirit in your heart, if you have not received the Holy Spirit, you cannot see God. And you cannot properly recognize Jesus Christ. So in 1 John it says, and so, by the Holy Spirit, concerning, so the Holy Spirit comes and He speaks again concerning the word spoken by Jesus. So the Holy Spirit comes again. He speaks to us. He gives us the word again concerning Jesus. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive and understand the proper interpretation of Jesus Christ and of God. So, the knowledge of the flesh, the wisdom of the flesh, uh, you cannot, if you do not receive the Holy Spirit, or you cannot, tr you cannot go, above, go beyond the knowledge and wisdom of the flesh. So, in Revelation, so, uh, so there was a time in a very in early career when there were many revivals at that time there was a great revival and interest in uh in uh commentaries on books about commentaries about the book of revelation and this was a uh, wildly spread um throughout south korea and I, I at least once uh, attended these revivals and I, I could see, I could see by the Holy Spirit that he was truly uh, Satan. He was truly speaking the message about Satan. So I was praying and I knew and under his, I understood immediately. So, and that, that very revivalist, two years later, uh, it was reported that he uh, drowned, that he drowned tragically. 
한달 동안이나 부활한다고 기다렸는데 냄새가 저 동네까지 들어오니까 동네 So he was uh, he was waiting uh, in accordance with his strange teachings he was wait they were awaiting for his resurrect for his own resurrection and uh, they f and they all discovered that he did not actually resurrect so it is uh, warned in the book of revelation if you add one small detail to that which is already written uh, God will add to that person those curses that are found in the book it is not according to the knowledge of man or the wisdom of man that comes from the flesh that one must teach and preach so if you interpret Jesus in accordance with the law of Moses in accordance with the teaching of the law of Moses you will fall into destruction you will perish if you interpret Jesus in accordance with the law of Moses you will perish you must learn to hear the words spoken by the Holy Spirit this may be uh, I my I'm sorry for speaking about this but so you may think that uh, you have learned you have learned and you know a lot you have learned a lot but uh, it is when I die but uh, I, I expect that it is when I die that you'll finally know oh so this is the truth that Pastor Kim was trying to teach us trying to speak to us and so there may be a time uh, when you try to seek that opportunity but will not have it again you must know to hear the words spoken by the Holy Spirit you must know and you must hear the words spoken by the Holy Spirit there were those who have gone to various churches have uh, participated in many uh, Christian schools in other places so what is the difference between other schools and this school and this church so when you have you will know those who those who have been to other places will know the difference between our church and theirs you must know how to listen by the Holy Spirit to hear the words of the Holy Spirit you must know to hear the words of the Holy Spirit so even the book of Revelation says he was here he have he who has ears to hear let him hear what this the Spirit speaks to the churches and so these churches found and mentioned in the book of Revelation are those who model themselves on the church of Jerusalem and so they and these seven churches they themselves did grow but they all had their different uh, characteristics but what was clear what is clear is that what is clear is that it states he who has ears to hear let him hear what the Spirit speaks to the churches this is what this is what the the Bible clearly states the Holy Spirit speaks these words to all the seven churches to all the churches so he who has ears to hear let him hear what the Holy Spirit speaks to the churches to him who overcomes to him who overcomes will receive this so the word of the Holy Spirit the word of the Holy Spirit so uh, when I uh, come on the Lord's Day to preach to preach I pray for the sake that I might preach the Word of God on the Lord's Day so this is the only method that I have not the knowledge and wisdom that comes from the flesh in, res in regards to these things I am lacking however concerning the wisdom and knowledge coming from the Spirit concerning the word of the Spirit the word of the Holy Spirit I am most I'm confident more than any other I know most acutely the word of the knowledge of the Holy Spirit I have in the past received much criticism received uh, much uh, 
criticism and accusation. Yet I speak the word that is spoken by the Holy Spirit. And so, even uh, the Apostle Paul, when they are uh, when they all understood that he was going to leave the next day so paul so paul would so paul planned to speak the whole night and there was one called eutychus and he uh he was falling asleep he fell from the third floor to the to the bottom floor and he died so no one can complain against the words spoken by the Holy Spirit or the works that are done by the Holy Spirit. So the words spoken by the Holy Spirit, one must know these things acutely. One must hear very carefully the words that are spoken today. It is not just to those who are who are suffering a medical disease or specific disease that we have all come here. You do, I do not know if uh, there are only just a fraction of the people here that actually have a proper disease. Disease concerns the relations of the flesh, the situations concerning the flesh. Uh, there are those who suffer in their mind in their mind psychologically or maybe those who suffer concerning family situations concerning our uh, uh, disappointments and struggles within the family all sorts of things there were a variety of uh, concerning and anxious situations and so the Bible clearly speaks about these things and these things relate to Beelzebub Beelzebub the Lord of the house of flies and so the one who the owner of the house the owner of the house who is full of de that is full of demons is Beelzebub Beelzebub he is the owner of the house that house that is full of demons and so he is the one that causes great havoc within families great troubles within families and suffering you have all come here to receive healing and curing to all these things in the family and other situations so what is this word that is spoken by the holy spirit go and sin no more go go now and sin no longer to those who are suffering from diseases so that you do not so that nothing uh, worse may happen to you, sin no longer. So in the book of John, uh, in the book of the, in the Synoptic Gospels, it, uh, the Lord Jesus spoke, speaks about the account when the demon goes out of a man and, and sees that it has no place to go. So it goes back into the place that it came from and brings with it seven spirits worse than itself. And the condition of that man is worse uh, than the first condition. So it is like this generation. The Lord Jesus had spoken about this. So you may be healed of your diseases, but in, so uh, you must, everyone seeks not to suffer those same diseases again, but those diseases come back again. So those diseases come back again. So we must strive to resist them. So it says in the Lord's Prayer, deliver us from the evil one. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And uh, demons, who do these refer to? These refer to Beelzebub, the owner of the house of uh, the flies. You must continue to resist it. You must resist these demons. There are, there is a, I have seen many occasions when one is healed of cancer. One is healed of cancer and uh, the demon goes out and he is healed.
And so at that moment, one enters into the kingdom. One has experienced the kingdom. But the moment you come again into corruption, you smoke, you indulge in smoking or drinking, uh, that same corruption will come again to you, that suffering, and it will come uh, even worse than it was before. This is why uh, this is why it is warned against falling into uh, falling into drastic corruption. The moment you enter into the severe corruption, you will you will suffer that same you will you will suffer that same uh, suffering again in even a worse way. You cannot uh, flee from this suffering. So the Lord's day. The Lord's Day, attending the Lord's Day service, uh, almost over 80%, 80% of those who have suffered from demons, from the oppression of demons, results in unfaithfulness and uh, in uh, indiscretion in attending the Lord's service. They have, been lazy, they have been lazy in attending the Lord's service. So when the Lord created, uh, the, created the creation, in uh, six days, in seven days, he blessed and made special one particular day, the day of the rest of God. God rested on this day, and God had commanded to remember this day that was commanded by him. Because, why? Because he had rested on this day. God has commanded us to differentiate all the other days from this special day. This is not the law of Moses. This was that commandment, that law, that was given from the very beginning of creation. God had created the all creation in accordance with seven days. But God had made special this, this one day, this holy day. God himself had rested on this day. So what happens uh, if you leave this earth? So what did God speak to us? So the word that God speaks to us is life. It is life. It is eternal life. It is that eternal life. God himself is that eternal life. God himself is the eternal life. And he himself rested on this special day of the Sabbath, on this day of rest. And by keeping this holy day, we recognize that God is the creator and the ruler of all creation. So what does John, uh, the book of John say? Uh, what does uh, the synoptic gospel say? The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath and the Lord of all the other days except of the Sabbath. So the Lord Jesus, the, the Son of Man, is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is the Lord and He controls uh, the Sabbath, the holy day. So those under the law of Moses, uh, they are... So if one, if it was not revealed in accordance with the actions of the flesh, they thought that they did not have sin. Because if they overtly committed sin, such as breaking the Sabbath, they knew they would die by stoning. If it was not uh, openly revealed, if it was openly revealed uh, in the eyes of men, they thought that they did not sin. So it has been commanded us not to desecrate the holy day. So when you disrespect God, when you when you are uh, have great disrespect for God by disobeying his commandments and you fall into drastic corruption you can now go back to God again 
And so, what was the problem that they did not know the truth? This is not for those who are diseased. But we have come here to experience uh, the healing and signs of Jesus Christ. We have come here to experience the powers, healings and signs of Jesus Christ. You have come here, all, you and I, to all experience, to possess the healings and signs of Christ. You must all receive these healings and signs, experience it. You must, uh, you must work and pray so that these healings and signs must come upon you all, or it must be given to all. This must be hindered from no one. All must receive these signs and wonders that come from Christ. And so to those who believe, to those who believe, these signs will manifest. They will speak in new tongues. They will drive out demons. They will pick up snakes at, and they will not be hurt at all. This is not just the power given to pastors, but to given to all. You must all understand this. I have witnessed all these things. There were those who uh, hear these messages and they are, they are hearing but they do not actually understand what is being spoken. So what can you do? You can only feign understanding it. On the outside, it seems that they all understand but they actually do not do not know so when you read a book you must you must uh, accentuate your strength and your concentration to understanding uh, a book an ordinary book and then once you are once you strain your concentration to understanding the book the knowledge will come to you from that book it is the same concept you must seek to understand God, the words spoken by to, to, uh, the, to understand the words spoken by God in the proper way. So there are in the church pamphlet there are those those books uh, that are recommended that are recommended uh, uh, in the barrier in the barrier series they are all recommended that you read them all this is uh, all designed they are quite like textbooks we might say they are designed so that you can be like pastor Kim like pastor Kiron Kim they are all designed so that you can receive the same power and perform the same powers so in this uh, in this evening and all the other following uh, sessions of this healing crusade, you must you must seek to be a true believer. Let us say together: Oh my soul, be a true believer! Oh my soul, be a true believer! Oh my soul, be a true believer! Well, so what is the definition and the understanding of a true believer? the scriptures cannot be broken the scriptures cannot be abolished and so those who receive the word of God are gods those who receive the word of God are gods to him who has received the word of God has the authority of a God he has become the children of God he has become the children of God he has received the authority of God and the scriptures cannot be abolished so you and I we all must understand these words that are being spoken we must understand them in the proper way one person on the left is sleeping one on the person on the right is not properly concentrating uh, this must not be so but you must strive to seek the understanding of God in accordance with what you have uh, heard, you must understand in the proper way. 
And so to those who have not properly understood, you must make the efforts to make him understand and explain to him and teach him what you have learned. So you must understand what is a proper believer. What is a proper believer? There are hymns that speak of this. Be a proper believer. Become a true believer. You must be a true believer. If you are a true believer, all your problems will be solved. Your problems will be solved if you are a true believer. So what is most uh, highly regarded in the, in the Bible are the prophets, are the figures of the prophets. So uh, concerning uh, the twelve concerning the kingdom of Israel there were 12 tribes there were 12 tribes of Israel however only two that is Judah and Bez uh, Judah and Benjamin they were they they uh, joined together to form the kingdom of the south which was the properly recognized kingdom of Israel and so and so David and his offspring were recognized as the properly recognized kings of Israel. And in Bethel, and in Beth Bethel, there was a city and a kingdom that was made there in the north, and the ten, the rest of the ten tribes composed uh, the kingdom of the north. All this uh, may, may be considered a kingdom in itself because they were indeed the children of Israel. However, the kings, the kings of the south, of the southern kingdom, were of the dis of were, were of the descendants of King David. So, what is the weakness of the kingdom of David? So, after David was Solomon. After that was Rehoboam. So there must be a, there must be a consistency. There must be tradition. There must be a consistent line, the handing down. There must be the consistency. There must be no um, contradiction within the line. So in the division of the Old Testament, there is the division of the greater prophets and the minor prophets. And so what does what does all the book of the prophets consist of? It consists of the bat of the battles between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. This is what uh, the Old Testament uh, speaks about. And so the the people of Israel, uh, there were these are different from the people of the Samaritans. So even uh, we can uh, consider uh, the example of uh, Korea, the North Korea and South Korea. It is. Uh, even uh, South Korea is a nation that is recognized in the UN. However, uh, North Korea does not have such recognition. So in the same way, there is consistency. There is a traditionalism in the recognition of South Korea. So what is the qualifications of a true prophet? What is the recognitions of a true prophet? Uh, Jesus was known as a prophet that came from Nazareth. So the people of Israel, they had heard again and again the words of the prophets. They had great, they had great respect and fear of the words of the prophets. They had great respect of the teachings and exhortations given by the by the prophets. The Is the Israelites had great respect for the prophets. 
And so they were at odds that Jesus had come from the Nazareth. And so uh, Jesus asked, who do the people say that I am? Some say John the Baptist, some say one of the prophets uh, like, uh, like uh, long ago. So the people of that time, they only regarded Jesus as a, as uh, a prophet like one of the prophets of long ago. But the Lord Jesus spoke, who do you say that I am? And then Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. I have spoken uh, again and again of these things, yet you must understand. You must understand. So Christ refers to that, uh, to that person who has the anointing of God, who has been sent by God. This is what Christ refers to. Christ refers to that duty, that ministry, that specific ministry given by God. There are many ministries. There are many mis ministries given by the Spirit. So, the name of Jesus is the name of God. And Christ refers to that duty, that ministry given from God. So, Jesus is the righteous one of God and he was sent by God. He was sent by God. And he was sent, chosen, and he, he made, he manifested himself in the world. So Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And the Lord Jesus was recognized in the proper way, in the proper way as the Savior and the Lord. Jesus is the Lord and the Savior. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. So the uh, the stressing of Lord is that he is the owner. He is the one and only Lord. He is the owner, the master. So, so when we confess that Jesus is the Christ, when we confess that Jesus is the Christ, we are recognizing that he is the owner, that he is the master. He is the one who saves. You must know this clearly. So who do you who do you say that I am? Who do you know that I am? Am I Elijah or am I John the Baptist or am I Jeremiah or one of the prophets? You must know very carefully who uh, the Christ is. So, uh, you must uh, properly recognize uh, consistency, continuity. You must recognize continuity, and that is the problem uh, with the separation sect right now. You cannot uh, go banging on the doors. You cannot go banging on the doors of the church. Je so, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Lord, the Master, the Owner, the Christ. So, although you are the, this is what the Lord Jesus uh, was saying, although you and I are born of the body of a woman, yet, who do you say the Son of Man is? And all those who are born of the, born of the flesh, although you may say that the Christ is the Son of David, or like Jeremiah, or Elijah, one of the prophets. But we confess Jesus is the Christ, the Savior. He is the Son of God. He is God. So, so uh, Simon, son of Jonah, this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by the Father who is in heaven, by my Father who is in heaven. This was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but it was revealed by my Father in heaven. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates and authority of Hades will never prevail against it. 
So uh, the term Peter, the name Peter, refers to rock. It refers to a rock, a great rock, a boulder. So um, there is a, there are different forms of the term, and it, one can refer one form can refer to a small stone, a pebble, but one form can refer to a boulder, a rock. So on this rock, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. This is the eternal rock. This is the eternal rock. So on this rock, on this rock, I will build my church. I will build the house of faith on the knowledge that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. I had spoken to this on the, the Lord's Day yesterday. So if... So if that eternal, that eternal death, if you do not believe, you will not escape this eternal death. So, the, so gates, uh, the gates of Hades will not uh, prevail against the church. What does this mean? Gates, it means authority. It means power. So, the receiving of baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, we have been freed, we have entered, we have entered into the new way by receiving baptism. We have been united with Christ. We have been united with Christ. So since we've been united with Christ by receiving baptism, in terms of uh, spirit, we have entered from death into life. We have been freed from death and have entered into life. We have clearly crossed the path. We have crossed the threshold. And so, the gates of Hades will never prevail against those who believe. This concerns spirit. So the, uh, the gates of Hades, the power of Hades will not prevail against uh, the church. I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you free on earth will be freed in heaven. To those who believe, this is given to those who believe in Jesus. So the term, the term, uh, the term in Korean uh, for healing, for healing, it it means coming from God. It means coming from Him, that which comes from God. And so the question is asked, who do you say that I am? You are the Christ. You are the Christ, the Savior. You are the Son of God. And so, since you have confessed this and you know this, I give you the keys of the kingdom. I give you keys in the, of the kingdom. Whatever you free on this earth will be freed in heaven. Whatever you forgive on this earth will be forgiven in heaven. Whatever you ask in my name, it will be given you. So that, the, the, so that the Son may be glorified. So that the Son may give glory to the Father. You may ask for anything in the name of the Son of God. This does not uh, happen if you just pray whatever you desire. The Lord Jesus must shed His blood. There is no other way. There is no other way to go into the kingdom. God has shed his, shed his, uh, given his blood. He has given the atonement of sins, the forgiveness of sins from, uh, from death to life. If, if we are 
to go back to God of repentance after we have uh, received the forgiveness of sins and yet fall and yet have fallen into corruption. Jesus would have to die again. Jesus would have to die again to uh, atone for these sins. Who do you say that I am? You must know most truly the knowledge of this confession of faith. So whoever it is, even those who do not have a specific disease, you have all come. You must be healed by all the pastors, by all the pastors are present here today. The Lord Jesus is the Lord. He is the Savior. He is the Son of God. I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bound on, whatever you bind on this earth will be bind in heaven. And so uh, the Lord Jesus spoke, Simon, son of Jonah. So what does this mean? So Bar, the term Bar means son in the Hebrew. So what does what does it mean when it says Simon, son of Jonah? So Jonah, we know that he was uh, he entered he entered into the sea. He fell into the sea after he rejected the calling of God. Later on, he went back to... But later, he obeyed. He obeyed. He preached the word of God to the people of Nineveh. They believed and they were saved. So this is uh, the same meaning. The same meaning. The same symbolism. And so, Simon, son of John, this is what it means. So, so if the Lord Jesus asks you, who do you say that I am? You, O oh Lord, are the Christ, the Son of God. So, who has, who has the first faith? What faith do we have? We have the faith of Abraham. We have the faith of Abraham. So, uh, in the same way that Abraham did, we must obey. We must obey. We cannot. We must obey. Just as Abraham had done. Go to the land that I command you to go. You must go. And so Abraham obeyed. He left everything and went to the place that was commanded by God. And so, so we confess that Jesus is Lord. We confess Jesus is Lord. There will be a, there will be a book connected with this uh, healing crusade. Connected with this healing crusade, you must uh, read this book that is soon to be uh, published. So Jesus is the Lord and the Savior. Jesus is my master. He is my owner. He is the one who gives me the salvation. He is the Savior who gives salvation. He is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Savior. He is God Himself. So what is this great authority that has been given us? This great uh, revelation that has been given us? And so it was, uh, it was uh, spoken by Jesus, Simon, son of Jonah, this was not revealed to you by man, but by my Father in heaven. On this rock, on this rock, I will build my church. The gates of Hades will not prevail against it. This is, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on this earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you release on this earth will be released in heaven. And the reason that you do not receive, the reason, the reason that you do not receive is you ask in accordance with your fleshly desires and not in accordance with the will of God. The reason you do not receive, the reason you do not receive 
uh, that is that you ask in accordance with your fleshly desires. You ask in accordance with your fleshly desires. That is why you do not receive. So that all that which belongs to the flesh that comes out from the flesh is the desires of it. If you seek to desire things um, concerning the flesh, you cannot receive. You cannot hope to receive. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. And once you have received the Holy Spirit, you'll be free from the desires of the flesh, free from sins. You must think of the work of Christ. You must not uh, think in the way that has been, that has been taught in other Christian churches. Uh, people think that healing uh, is uh, a teaching of heresy in other modern in other Christian churches you must not think in the way that is taught in other Christian churches so you confess they confess that Jesus is Christ that Jesus is Lord what did Jesus do so Jesus died on the cross on the cross so Jesus what did Jesus do he was punished he was punished with a. Uh, he was punished with severe punishment. He was whipped. He was whipped in accordance with the judgment given by the priests, the Sadducees, the Pharisees. Although some had some had advocated that he was without sin, without crime. Yet, nevertheless, they still punished him. And by his punishment, we have been healed. By his punishment that he inflicted, that he suffered, we have been healed. We have, uh, in believing, we have passed our sufferings, our diseases, on to Jesus. We have passed by his death by his the, by the death of Jesus he took upon all the the healings upon all the uh, the diseases the sufferings upon to himself and therefore we live by his wounds we live and we are healed if he was condemned with sin if he could if he was condemned in accordance with genuine sin then we could not be healed or uh, even Pilate even Pilate confessed even he confessed that uh, I am innocent of this man's death although I could not find any sin within him yet since you insist I am innocent of this man's death, of this man's punishment. He, before the presence of the people, clearly washed his hands with water, and then he uh, he proceeded with uh, his he, pro he proceeded with the death of Jesus. So, the death of Jesus refers to the death of our of our suffering. The death of our suffering he took upon uh, himself all diseases and all healings upon to his own flesh Jesus said you will surely die the moment the moment the God said to Adam the moment you eat of this fruit you will surely die and so Adam did die and and so the merit of the cross the merit of the cross of Christ this was not um, this was refer this was related to our diseases to the healing of our diseases and to the taking upon onto his own flesh our sins and our diseases and by his wounds we have been healed by his wounds we have been healed by his punishment that was inflicted on him we have been healed so there were those 
Those who do not properly recognize the punishment that was inflicted on Jesus. Jesus inflicted or suffered and endured punishments, severe punishments, and by these we are healed. That is, in accordance with the merit of the cross of Christ. So the merit of Christ, the merit of Christ concerns, concerns sin and disease. These were all taken away by Christ. He put this onto himself. And so when Christ had done this, when Jesus had done this, our sins, our diseases were immediately taken away. Just as Pilate, just as Pilate had said, uh, Pilate had demonstrated when he washed his hands clearly in the presence of the people to show his innocence of this sinless man in the same way when he, Jesus uh, had done this, when he had endured punishment, the whipping, the scourging, all the curses, all the curses of Adam, of man, he took upon himself. He took upon all these upon himself. And so those, those sins, those death in which God had said, of you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. You will surely die. You must have faith. You must have faith. And some people, uh, they do not know, and they will say, did uh, really, uh, was this really spoken in the past? To those who have received the grace of Christ, so it is written in the Bible, those who believe are, are justified, receive the justification from God. There is not one person that can strive by his own uh, actions and obedience and receive justification from God. By his whipping, by his punishment that he endured, we are justified, we are made righteous by the deeds done by Jesus. You must uh, read together that which is... Uh, you must not just hear this in, your, in, your, in words, but you must uh, check the Bible. Isaiah. Uh, so, first Peter. And so um, people do not recognize the healings and signs of Christ. They reject it. This is because teachers, Christian teachers, do not have powers in themselves. They do not have powers in themselves and they rationalize everything. They reject the healing of Christ. They reject the healings, workings of Christ. They reject the truth. And they rationalize everything. There is only one atonement. There is only one atonement. You must know this most keenly. You must know this. You and I must receive this power of Christ. Whoever believes in Christ will understand this, uh, this power and will receive this power. No one, no one knew that Jesus was the Christ because it was not revealed by the Spirit. It is only by the Holy Spirit that one will, it is only by the Holy Spirit that one will confess and one will know that Jesus is the Son of God, that He is the Christ, the Savior. No one can know that Jesus is the Christ except by the Holy Spirit. It is only when the Holy Spirit comes that you will recognize and you will be witnesses of Jesus and you will speak the word of Jesus. So in this time, you must know who Jesus is, that's who the Son of Man is. That He is the sinless one. He is the righteous one. 
So people in the uh, people during his time, they only recognized him as a prophet like the prophets of long ago. Those who recognize uh, him in this way have nothing to do with God. So we, we recognize and we confess, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who do you recognize Jesus is? The Son of the living God. Who do you know Jesus is? The Son of the living God. So speak these, speak these words in truth, in true faith, in true and honest faith. That who is it? Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of the Living God. You must, you must pray honestly to God now. So let us, uh, you must solve this problem. You must solve this problem. All your problems that you have. So that you all receive power that you all become powerful believers to have to those who have faith to those who have faith and therefore receive this power to those who have faith and receive this power so sing this hymn together hymn 184 what can wash away my sin The Lord Jesus had said, so when Jesus received the baptism, when Jesus had received the baptism of John, he in the past was the son of David, the son of David, the son of Mary, the son of Joseph. But when, when he was baptized, he buried all this. And then he came up, received the Holy Spirit. He received the testimony of God. This is my son whom I love. With him I'm well pleased. He buried the status as the son of David. He became, he, he was the son of God who was come to give judgment. You must... 
You must pray honestly for this. So, so um, Pastor Overseer Song Young Kim, he is also going to pray and he's going to preach words. So, you must pray and you must hear, you must believe that you have this power to be full of the Holy Spirit. You must not pray in uh, feeble words, but pray with loud voice, with mighty power from the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You must pray again. You must pray that your spiritual eyes are opened, that you go to God by the Holy Spirit, that you be full of the Holy Spirit. You must pray to be full of the Holy Spirit. Pray to be full of the Holy Spirit. There is a specific order in, uh, uh, found in the pamphlet in the Healing Crusade. You must confess Jesus is Christ. Jesus is the Savior. He is the Savior. And he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You must believe this. Please pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, So you must know that Beelzebub is known as the owner of the house of the demons, the house of the flies. So if you, if you possess all the characteristics, you become like the owner. So he is the one who holds the authority of death, the power of death. If you are full of the Holy Spirit, you can drive out such a one. You can drive out such a one by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus is my owner. Jesus alone is my owner. Jesus alone is my master. You must pray that these be driven out of you. You must pray that these be driven out of you. Be full of the Holy Spirit and pray that these are driven out. Lord Jesus! Lord Jesus! Jesus! Lord Jesus! Lord Jesus! 
나의 주 예수 그리스도 혼란이 주인이 아니라 나의 주 예수 그리스도 어둠이 주인이 아니라 나의 주 예수 그리스도 다 자리에서 일어나세요. So please stand up. Please, uh, everyone, stand up now. You must confess. Jesus is the owner. Jesus is the master. Jesus is the Son of God. You must pray that Beelzebub is driven out of you. You must pray that he is driven out. You must pray that the owner of the house of demons is driven out. You must go out, you filthy demons. Be gone, you filthy demons. So put your so please put your hands over your head. Please put your hands over your head. The right hand on your head, the left on your heart. Try be driven out. Go out, you filthy demons. 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 Go out, be gone, be gone, be gone. Go out, you filthy demons. Go out, be gone. Go out, all you curses, all you curses. Go out, go out, go out, go out, go out, go out. All those in the households, all those cold suffering is in the households. Go out, go now, go out, go out, go out, go out. Be gone, be gone, be gone, be gone, be gone.